In the last installment of the video series, uh, I basically walked you through the metadata that affects forms and reports. And uh, I know that I did it in almost endless and ridiculous detail, but I do that just so that you have some frame of reference for the things that we talk about in class. Before I jump in, I'm actually going to start creating forms now, but before I do that, there's one other kind of metadata that I wanted to talk about, and it's the lookup metadata. Okay, so we have this example here where we want to connect the employee ID to the department that the employee is in. Right? To the typical user, these department codes aren't going to mean anything. Right? So we'll want some easy way to create a lookup for the department ID. As it turns out, Access gives us a way to do this. It's the lookup display control. So if we change the display control from text box to combo box, Access gives us a whole new set of values. And basically what we want to do is we want the department ID, the foreign key that references department ID in TBL department, we want that to not display the actual number. We want it to do the lookup in the primary key of the department table so that it will actually show a meaningful value to an end user who really may not care about the ID number. So the way that we can do this is we select combo box for display control and we'll select a row source, right? So in this case, it'll be department. The bound column will generally be one if you've made your primary key the first field, okay? So in this case, department ID is the primary key. It is the first field in the list. So we want the bound column, that is the value that will ultimately be stored in the foreign key, right? to be column one, meaning the department ID from the department, the TBL department, should actually be what restricts the values that can go into the department ID and TBL employee, okay? So in other words, we're making the GUI basically reinforce the foreign key primary key relationships, all right? So we want that to happen. In order for us to display the department name, we're going to have to give the column count two, right? Because we have two fields in that lookup table. And we're going to hide the first field, meaning we're going to put a zero width for the first column so that we can uh, preserve the value so that it can be saved, but only display the department name, okay? So by using this system, we'll actually be able to create a control that's much easier for the typical person to use, all right? So now that we've gone through endless detail in all of our metadata, let's actually sort of create a form here, right? I'm gonna use the form wizard. I'm gonna do it sort of the easy way. Okay, I'm going to select uh, basically all of the fields here just to sort of make it easier and we can do some testing. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, columns are fine. I like to give it sort of a nice name. So, you know, we'll call it FRM employee, and we're going to want to modify the design here. Uh, you know, and when Access creates these things, it, it, it's going to do it in a way that, um, you know, it makes a lot of guesses, right? So it's just going to assume that whatever you called your employee form is, is necessarily what you would want the, that form to be called. I don't know anybody who would want this to be called FRM employee, so, you know, we might change it to something like admanage you know, employee data, right? And this would entirely depend on uh, how you thought this would be used and by whom. So we can sort of adjust this a little bit, right? And, uh, you know, we can expand this and do these things. Um, a couple of other nice things that we can do, um, we can actually uh, select all of the fields, right? Okay, this is kind of nice. We can select all of these fields and we can go to arrange and we can make them stacked and it'll give us really sort of a nice layout. And you know, once you're here, you can, you know, sort of do some other things with these labels, right? So um, I would probably select all of these labels and move them much closer to uh, the text boxes that they modify, right? So we want these things to be sort of closer than they might otherwise be. Okay, we'll sort of right, do something like this, right? Move them pretty close. Maybe even move them a little closer. 
you know, just so that we can sort of clean this up a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at how we did with the uh, values here. Notice I must have forgot to put in a caption for zip code, so we'll probably want to make that nice and neat, right? And we may want to expand the space that we have, right? Because we'll certainly want to put in some buttons and things like this. So let's just sort of clean up this form and think about the things that we would want to do to clean up this form, right? We've said one of the things is we're going to want to disable this employee ID. We don't want people to go in and muck with our surrogate keys, right? That's absolutely positively something that we don't want. So we're going to go to the property sheet and um, I'm going to say if we go to, where is it? If we go to data, I'm going to say, is this field enabled? No, it's not enabled, okay? And it'll be grayed out. And that's, for a field like that, that's what we want. We don't want people to go in and muck with our surrogate keys. That's probably not a good thing to let an end user be able to do. Uh, let's see some other things that we might want to do here. Um, we'll probably want to add some navigation buttons, right? And, you know, just for now, I'm just going to do some simple ones, some ones that basically we did in class, right? So, you know, go to previous record, we want to give people a way to sort of navigate through this stuff, right? Give it sort of a meaningful name, okay. Um, and then we'll want to, you know, give them probably a way to save the record, right? So we said we give them save a record. Okay, and then we'll also want to give them some way to uh, go to the next record. And you could obviously add many other buttons and do other things here. It's just an example, right? Just the kind of thing that you might want to do. Okay, you could say finish. And at this point, we probably would want to do something like this. Grab all of these guys, highlight them all, go to arrange, and then use tabular, right? And this way we get to sort of a nice sort of consistent look and feel. Things are sized roughly the same. Um, it just makes that piece a little bit easier. And uh, now, you know, we probably have something that's moderately usable. Um, we're probably gonna make some tweaks to it as we go along. Let's, uh, let's do some testing. Let's see how this, how this looks. Let's jump into the form, all right? Um, it's a little bit spread out, right? So it's a little bit, you know, sort of, you know, I might want to sort of press these up so that it all fits onto the screen neatly. Okay, but for now, this will do. Let's make sure that our controls work, right? I can scroll through these things, right? That seems pretty good. Um, so let's do, you know, some of the basic things that you would want to do. You'd want to add a new one, right? So let's sort of go in and add a new one. Notice all of our default values have filled in. Okay, so, um, you know, it's going to make up some names here. Okay. Uh, you know, Greg Jones will just make up a birth date, right? Okay, make up a salary. Okay, vacation days, that's fine. Um, hire date, let, let's just do some testing, right? Let's just, I had some uh, trouble last time because I got sort of turned around with how this works. Let me see if I can hire him before he's born. Let's just sort of test this out. Can I do this? Okay, um, it's letting me here, right? But remember, we enforce this as a table constraint. So let's try to fill in the rest of the stuff and see how far it lets us go with that. West Street, right? I'll make up a city, we'll call it George, Pennsylvania. Okay, notice we get our masks here, right? And I'm just going to make up something here and we get to select a department. Okay, so this is one of the reasons this is much more user friendly than um, doing something like uh, having a number there. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why we would do that. Now, if this is working correctly, I want to point out that birth date is 1973, hire date is 1971. Because it's a table constraint, when I hit save, that's when the check is going to come up. Okay, so this is sort of important. The access is going to do different kinds of enforcement of constraints at different times, all right? And it's easy to forget this sometimes. So as you're testing things, you'll wanna make sure that you consider that as you're going through, okay? So it's not going to let me do that, and that is a good thing. So let's change this to a more reasonable time, right? And let's save it, okay? And that works pretty well. Um, let's try a few other things, because we had a couple of other things that we wanted to test here. Let's find out if I can add a birth date in the future, right? So can I add, this is one of the things that we said we shouldn't be able to do, 
Okay, and notice, I didn't have to hit save for that to work. It came up immediately. Why? Because that is a column level constraint, okay? Access is going to check that at, you know, when you commit that column, okay? The birth date must be in the past, right? So I'm gonna go back and change that back to our 19 sort of 73. Right. So it looks like most of our checks are working. Okay, I just want you to I just want to reiterate that these checks work at different levels. The ones that work at the column level will function one way, and Access will check them one way. The columns that get the pardon me the uh, check constraints that are at the table level will be checked at the end when you actually try to save that record. Right, and that makes sense because. Access doesn't know what state your entire record is in until you actually click save. Okay, so two different levels of, of check constraints that can have, take place at two different times. So let's take a look at another example of a column constraint. I'm going to try to put in a negative number for salary just to see if this is going to let me do it. Right, so let's say that's negative 100. Okay, notice immediately it's going to tell me you can't have negative 100 for a salary. Why? because it is a column level constraint, right? It can tell me the constraint only checks, it only needs to know the value of that column to check if the value meets the constraint or not. So it doesn't have to wait. With a table constraint, it's got to wait, okay? And that's why sometimes when you're sort of sorting through your metadata and thinking about how things should be checked, you have to think really, really carefully because it's easy to forget, okay? This is not something uh, this isn't. There's a lot of things going on here, and it's um it's something that's easy to overlook if you're not paying attention, All right? So let's return this to a more reasonable value. Okay, um, you know, let's just make sure that our phone number stuff is working, right? Ooh, that's weird because I have the default value. It looks like my phone number mask is not doing what I would expect it to do. That's interesting. Uh, so the default value in that case is actually interrupting the way the mask works. Right? Here, our mask is doing just what we would expect. Okay, so that's something that we may want to investigate. Why is our mask not functioning there the same way that we want to? So this is all part of testing, right? This is all sort of part of the stuff that you would want to do. Um, it's probably important for me to point out at this point that a lot of these properties exist both at the table and at the form or report level. So if we go back, I'm just going to save the record, right? Because that's sort of enough for us now. If we go back and we take a look at design, right? And I actually pick, let's take a look at phone number just to make sure that phone number is doing what we think we should it should do. Notice it's picking up the input mask here. Okay, so it looks like it's doing, you know, what we would want it to do there. So, um... We'll have to sort of test this a little bit and see what's going on with phone number. It may just be that the default value is uh, changing the way that the mask is actually functioning. So we'll have to sort of keep our eyes on that. Maybe that default value isn't something that we actually want. But these are all things that you'll actually sort of work through as you work through your forms, right? You'll actually want them to make sense and make sure that they conform to the kinds of things uh, that your users will expect, right? Because we'll want people to be able to um, enter data quickly. So just for a goof, right, let's go back to sort of the beginning here. Right? If I add a phone number here, and there we go, we got our mask, okay? So, um, you know, the way the masks actually work uh, can very often depend on context, okay? So this is something that We'll want to keep in mind okay but we got our masks we have we've been able to test our validation rules we've been able to test both uh table constraints and uh, column constraints and we've gotten our nice sort of uh, combo box here so we're doing pretty good okay so far so good while we're talking about forms i also wanted to uh, demonstrate sort of a more complicated form that gives us some new capabilities, right? So this is one that we did in class. Um, there might be times where you would actually wanna see the data from more than one table at the same time, okay? So for example, I may want to see department and all of the employees in that department underneath, okay? There, there's a way to do this. Um, the control that makes this most uh, easy and most usable is actually the subform. 
And so I want to give you a little bit of experience, uh, sort of a little bit of a review of how we do that. Let's start with department stuff, okay? And let's say that I want to show all of the stuff in department. In addition to that, I also want to show, um, you know, basically everything from employee two, okay? And this is going to make for a really, really long form. Um, but it's something that we're, we'll sort of live with for now, um, just because, you know, we're this is sort of a demo. Um, this might be too much for an actual sort of layout, but, you know, I think you'll get the point. Notice that Access is going to pick up how these things are related, right? We've got a one-to-many relationship from department to employee. And it says, well, okay, so department's going to be the main view, and then you want a subform to render the employee. That's well, exactly what I would want, right? So we get this sort of long list here. Um, we can say next, right, data sheet. And I would probably, you know, rename these form. We'd want to know that these are sort of forms, right? Okay, and um, we'll certainly want to modify the form design because there'll be a lot of things that we'll want to change. Okay, and first and foremost, we'll probably want to give this a more meaningful name. Okay, we want to have some meaningful name. So we would say something like, you know, manage department information, right? And then that means we can sort of pull up our menu here. Right, and we're probably going to want to make this wide because we're going to have a lot of information here. Um, and keep in mind, these are just controls like any other. You can pull these out. You can change the way they're structured. Like one thing that I'll do here, I'm going to lengthen this a bit. Right, and I know that there's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of sort of employee data. So I'm going to want to take that really wide. Right. So what I'll want to do is probably. Okay, I'm going to want to um, basically move this, okay, so that it sits sort of up here, right, with the other columns. But what I really want to do is take this guy, okay, and move him down somewhat so that I can also lengthen him and slide him over, right? So. In other words, I, I want this to go really, really wide here. Okay. Um, I'll also probably want to change this to something a little bit more meaningful to a user, right? So you know, something like employee data, right? That might work. And for these, like this is a place where we may want to actually um, select a few of these and make these, you know, pull these back a little bit, right? Okay, and I can sort of take these and pull these back. So, you know, there are things that you'd want to do just for aesthetics um, to keep things sort of looking just so, right? And we might even want to, you know, use a range a little bit to make those stacked, right? And it'll sort of give us a nice, you know, presentation. And obviously we can sort of pull this down a little bit. Okay, and pull it down again. You know, because we want that to be uniform. Um, and so, you know, we can probably just take a look at what this will do, right? We'll want to look at the form view. Okay, and what we get is we get sort of the department, right? And as we scroll through the departments, we get all of the employees who are associated with that department, okay? And, and we can talk about sort of, you know, how to space this out and, you know, probably create it so that we can get more here. But the point is this gives us a way to sort of pretty quickly look through all of the employee data that's associated with um, a particular department, right? And there are a couple things we'll want to do to sort of make this a little bit more usable, right? So, um, you know, we probably want to, you know, disable this, okay? So we would probably want to do something like, you know, is that field enabled? Well, no, we don't want that to be enabled. We don't want them to change that, okay? Um, we probably want to add some buttons, just like we did before, right? We want to create controls for the user that makes it easy, right? So go to previous. Okay, and there's really not that much new here. And we're going to want to save a record. Right, and I like to call them something like save, right? 
And then we're going to want to right, go to the next record. Okay, and then we'll probably want to, I like to get rid of these now. We'll want to arrange these so that they're nice. We have a pretty straightforward way of doing that, right? And, you know, and we could sort of fiddle with how all this stuff should be aligned, right? And sort of think through like, what's the easiest way to align these controls and, and, and things like this. Um, the other thing that we'll want to do, and while we're here, we're going to want to think about tab order, right? Is the tab order correct? Okay, how is how is it going to scroll through these forms, right? It looks like it's going to department ID, department name, the subform, command 11, command 12, command 13, all right? So that's probably the auto order. But keep in mind, if you need to, you can change these things, okay? You can actually change the tab order. That's part of the user experience. So that's one of the things that we'll want to test, right? So let's sort of tab through here. Okay, so that all looks like a reasonable way that that tab should work. And this is going to take us through every single one of these fields, all right? So because of that, I'm going to go to one with a little bit less data, all right? Um, let's sort of start here and see how we do. Okay, it's going to sort of pop us through here. Okay, it's going to take us through the new record. All right, and then it goes to previous, to save, to next, and back here. Okay, so it'll actually let us sort of scroll through. So it looks like the tab order is pretty reasonably established, okay? Let's think about what this actually means though, right? So if I go to research, right? Research currently has no employees. Okay, what this means is that I can actually enter an employee directly into this department, all right? So, um, you know, I don't know, we'll call it Fred, Bed, okay? And we'll give sort of a birth date. Let's pick 1972, salary, so 40,000 or so. And we're gonna keep walking through, right, the vacation days, hire date. Okay, and this might be a time where, hey, maybe we we'll wanna test if, you know, we can do something silly, right? Like, can I hire good old Fred before he was born? Right, let's test it. We'll pop in a phone number, okay, so say like, uh, you know, 914, right? 111, 1234. Okay, and we'll want to put an address 34 East Street. Okay, we'll call it Jones, Pennsylvania, and we'll put in our mask, you know, so 12345. Okay, so that's enough. Right, and let's see what happens. Okay, notice it's still enforcing the hire date must be later than the birth date. Okay, so that's exactly what we want it to do. Okay, so you know, as you're using these forms, you wanna make sure that you're testing them, that you're doing things that make sense, right? Um, that's really, really important. Um, and then in theory, we should be able to save that. And now we've, in theory, we should have a new employee um, automatically entered into research. At this time, this is the kind of thing where I'd actually want to check it, right? So I want to go to employee, notice there's Fred Bed, 1972, 40,000, um, all the stuff about his phone number, okay? And notice he's been added to research. So, um, you know, I like showing this to students because it gives you a way to recognize uh, how, that you can make some pretty complicated functionality uh, right in access and it let, gives you a way to explore you know what a user should be able to do it's important to say at this point um, it isn't immediately obvious that you would want someone to be able to enter an employee data directly into the department name so directly into the department so for example what you may want to do actually is just allow people to see the employees who are in a department let them change the department information but not actually let them change the employee information if you wanted to do that, again, we have controls to make this happen. All you need to do is go back to design, okay, select the control, open up the property, and just disable it. Okay, um, We want them to be able to see it. We don't want them to be able to modify it. If you do this, um, what will happen is you'll take the view, right? You will not be able to click in. You'll be able to see all the data, right? You can screen, sort of check it out if you want. Um, it will sort of limit your ability to scroll, so you have to think about how this is sized. But um, 
if you want to create just a read only component, you can do that the same way that we've been doing all along, right? So we may, in fact, you know, if you're thinking about just sort of looking at the people who are in the department, you may want to remove all these fields. You may not want to see salary, right? Like this may just be for somebody who gets to see who's in a department, but they can't actually see personal information like salary or birth date. You would probably recreate this form so that you couldn't see those things, right? So just for good measure, let's make sure that we can still add a new department. Okay, so um, I don't know, we'll call it something like information technology. Oh, ooh, look at that. It's not long enough. So we'll shorten it to information tech. Let's save it. Okay. And our form works, right? We can't add anybody new, but um, that gets us what we need. So uh, basically what we've done here is we've, you know, started with metadata, right? We've talked about how the metadata can help us structure our forms. And notice we get all these sort of nice names here because we put in our captions. We can actually control what users can do. And with things like combo boxes and with things like um, these subforms, we can actually create a lot of functionality and really protect our data and give users a much better experience than they would have um, otherwise. Okay, we, we want to help users take this data and make it useful, not let it just sort of turn into garbage. Uh, so next time we'll sort of talk about roughly the same thing, but we'll talk about reporting.